Please like and subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Hi, it's Mark from the Antique Royalist Museum, AE2EA. You know, two years ago I was given this 250-pound uh, 1950s AM broadcast transmitter by Bill Sitzman, retired broadcast engineer, and I converted this for use on 160 meters. But at the time, I only did the minimum amount of work required to get this running on 160 meters. So I'm going to show you what I did uh, since then to improve the performance of this transmitter. You know, an AM broadcast transmitter will spend its entire life on one frequency unless the station moves the frequency or if it gets sold. This transmitter, starting in the mid-1950s, uh, was in Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Uh, later it was sold to a uh, short-lived station in Springville, New York. And then Bill Sitzman, uh, the uh, engineer that gave it to me, used to haul it around in a trailer uh, to do field tests uh, for antenna studies. But a broadcast transmitter's output tank circuit isn't designed to be frequency agile. It's designed to be on one frequency. And the original parameters for this uh, transmitter uh, was that it would operate on a single frequency in a range between 535 kilohertz and 1650 kilohertz, the extent of the AM broadcast band at that time. But it would drive an antenna impedance anywhere from 20 ohms to 250 ohms. Also, typical conditions that uh, an AM broadcast transmitter would run across uh, at that time in the 1950s. But these aren't the conditions that we run across on the 160 meter amateur band. Uh, 160 meter amateur band is from uh, 1800 kilohertz to 2000 kilohertz. And I'm going to be running into an output impedance of 50 ohms. I'm using coaxial cable, about 150 feet of it, uh, going out to my antenna. So the original output network wasn't really suitable for my use. So I made some changes. But first, I want to talk about the original output circuit. So here's the output network as RCA originally designed it. Now the tubes would be off to the left here, and there's a coupling capacitor for DC blocking. The actual resonant tank circuit is right here, and it consists of this capacitance that is out created from this uh, variable capacitor, a big Johnson bread slicer shown here in this picture, and that was in this box here, and one or two capacitors that you would connect in to give you enough capacitance for whatever piece of the AM broadcast band you were operating in. The inductor was interesting. They used this as a uh, resonant transformer. And the upper tap here would be selected to adjust your inductance for the tuning range that you wanted in the AM broadcast band. And then the lower tap was used to adjust your antenna loading. The problem I ran into, and this is a physically large device, is the upper tap was moved so far down to get into the 160 meter band that I had very little range to work with on my antenna loading adjustment. In addition to the resonant tank part of the circuit, RCA also included an adjustable T-network, L-network. And that consisted of these components here. You had L106 and L107. If you kept both of them in the circuit, you'd have a T-network, or you could use one or the other to configure this as an L-network. There's L106, L107, and your three capacitors are here. And you can see, once again, these would be strapped in. It's a great system for a transmitter that would operate on one frequency, but not very good for the amateur band, where you might have to adjust this to get within the entire range of the 160-meter band. So because of the limitations of the network that RCA designed into this transmitter, I decided to replace it with a Pi network, which had become the standard output network for an amateur radio transmitter after World War II. In order to calculate a Pi network, I needed to know what my plate load resistance was. And it's a simple calculation, it's Ohm's Law. So the plate load resistance for a Class C amplifier is the DC plate voltage divided by two times the DC plate current. And you wonder, why two times the plate current? Well, this is because in a Class C amplifier, the tubes are only conducting less than 50% of the time. So you need to adjust the average plate current to accommodate for the peak plate current of the tubes. So we have 
1450 volts divided by 2 times 250 milliamps and that comes out to a plate load resistance of 2900 ohms. There are a number of tools I could have used to design my Pi network. I'm going to use Pi L and I'll put a link to this below this video. But it's kind of simple. There's only a few values I need to do this. Uh, I need to enter my frequency in megahertz and I'm going to enter the bottom of the 160 meter band and this will give me the largest capacitance I'm going to need throughout this band. I'll also add 2.9 kilo ohms uh, for the load impedance, the plate load impedance going into the network. The intermediate impedance is uh, an important value for designing a Pi L network, but for a Pi network it's going to be the same as my uh, output impedance. So I'll put in 50 ohms for that. I'll also put in 50 ohms for my load impedance. And I need to enter a value for the Pi section Q. And this is an important number because remember this is a class C amplifier. And a class C amplifier is conducting less than 50% of the time. So there's pulses of RF coming into the circuit, but I need a clean sine wave coming out of it in order to eliminate harmonics. And the higher the Q, the more harmonic reduction you'll have in this network. A higher Q also will give you a little less efficiency in the network, but the rule of thumb for a class C RF amplifier is to have a pi section Q of between 12 and 15. I'm going to use 13 for this calculation. So I've plugged all these numbers in here and I'll click accept and it gives me a uh, inductance of 23.7 microhenries, a uh, tuning capacitance of 360 puff and a load capacitance of 2108 puff. So I can use this to adjust my values in my circuit. Now remember uh, in a Pi network you'll also uh, want to have considerably more loading capacitance than what's specified here so that when you're tuning your transmitter you can start out with a larger loading capacitor than you need in order to minimize your antenna current on tune-up. So how did it all work out? Well it worked out great. Uh, I was able to uh, reuse a capacitor I bought at a swap meet that came in uh, an antenna tuner that uh, I had no use for. Uh, that's uh, five sections, 2000 puff made a great loading capacitor for 160 meters where you're usually a little bit challenged to uh, find enough capacitance for your loading capacitor. Uh, kept the original tuning capacitor in this box and uh, rather than reuse these large mica capacitors that were in the original transmitter I used a couple of ceramic uh, uh, doorknob capacitors to uh, get my capacitance in range. I also had to add a couple of uh, ceramic doorknobs to my uh, output uh, uh, my loading capacitor to get that within range too. Uh, got rid of this overly large inductor that I didn't need in the tank circuit and I, re I reused one of the uh, inductors from the T network, uh, put that over here and now that's my tank circuit inductor. Uh, so overall the project was great, a real success. Uh, makes it real easy to uh, tune up this transmitter as I switch frequencies in the 160 meter band and uh, that's all there is to it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you subscribe and like us and share this video with others. Thanks a lot for watching. For more information about Pi Networks, watch The Mysteries of the Pi Network Explained with Greg Latta.